In studio with the Hall of Famer, Matt Miller and New York Times bestselling author, John Gilstrap. Good morning, John, and good morning, Matt. Good morning. Good morning. And one of us is totally freaked out right now. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, in the, somebody in the room doesn't like clowns. Yes, that would be me. That would be you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, your high blood pressure is kicking in, baby. Yeah. It's like I, I, got, <laughs> I got Pennywise sitting across from me. And Fern, a.k.a. Pennywise, is here with us. Tag, you're it, right? Uh, huh? I am indeed. Well, good I'm, morning. I, you've never... I'm it and a bouquet of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> Loons being the proper part of the word right there. <laughs> hey, uh, what uh, first time I think you've come in uh, in costume? Or do you usually dress like this when you go out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't know, do you? <laughs> well, yeah, I don't. No, I've come in in like uh, 19th century garb and stuff That's like true. that and came in as the character of Rose the Hat, which was uh, a prime character and a uh, follow-up to Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King. Mm -hmm. um, it was called Dr. Sleep. So I was Rose the Hat. So you got a Stephen King thing. I do have a Stephen King thing. I have a picture of myself in front of his house. It, I, I think it's more like Does he not posing. It was more like a stalking <laughs> type Was this the event. main house? With with all the, the big the, gates the, and all the that. The spider yeah. webbing yeah. and the gothic stuff and everything. And I was grinning so hard you couldn't even tell I had a bottom half of my face because my face was split in half. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty, I have to say, you did a good job. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Yes, you I did. I wanted to look pretty for you today. Well, you did, a, you did a heck of a job. Okay. So uh, what's your schedule like today in this Halloween 2023? Um, I was going to do a benefit for uh, the Animal Welfare Society of Jefferson County, and I think we're going to push that back to the weekend because um, it's hard on a, on a weeknight unless you have a private group. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard to get a bunch of public people out when the kids have to go to school in the morning, mm -hmm. people have to go to work in the morning. So I think we're going to push that back. I think I might – Stay home, watch the original uh, Halloween, which I've seen. Oh, Jamie Lee this, Curtis. Yeah, yeah this will be the 48th year I've watched it. Donald Pleasance. Yes. I remember seeing that at the theater back in the day when it was 1978 out. it came out. Yeah. Uh, that was, I, I thought that was a really cool movie. It, it was a little different than most of the, like the horror movies of the time. It was. It was a legend of its own. And the yeah. music, you know, the piano music? Yes. It was some guy was just goofing around with a, a child's piano, yeah, and it became the theme song. Oh, like the little Linus piano? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, listen yeah. to it the next time you hear a commercial for it. I would have to do that. And then there's been so many offshoots, and then Jamie Lee Curtis eventually kind of came back to wrap up the series. Yeah, Halloween Kills, and out of all of, I don't, I'm not particularly fond of any of the ones in the middle. Mm -hmm. I kind of think of it as a bookends. The first one is. Probably my favorite movie, and it was the simplest and lowest yeah. budget. Oh, yeah. And then the last one, because I'm a huge Jamie Lee Curtis fan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you another movie I watch every year this time is Young Frankenstein. Do you? Oh, I like The Lost Boys. You like The Lost the Boys? The music in The Lost Boys is to die for. No pun intended. <laughs> that, established, <laughs> that established a lot of stars at a young age it did it really did Kiefer um, Sutherland was I think was that his first movie certainly an early movie yeah and the other one what was it uh was it Stand By Me or something Stand By Me is big. was uh Stephen King that was from a what, short story by Stephen King yeah, yeah. The Body mm -hmm. yep that one established a lot of people too River Phoenix of course mm -hmm. so um yeah I got I watched the same and then thing the dumpy kid week. married a supermodel yeah he did <laughs> <laughs> oh. my favorite stephen king book is salem's lot i like salem's lot my favorite and they did wonderfully with the miniseries was um the stand oh yeah the stand was a great book until the last hundred pages and then it's like he was tired of it and he said okay i'm just gonna write an ending and be done no but did you read the unabridged one it came out just a few years ago and think I yeah, sort of got extra it, thousand pages. Yes, it's, no, it's, it's a, like a it's a, like a lethal weapon. A, you know, you know, you drop it, you're going to break somebody's foot. So, uh, but that one was fabulous. So, how are you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so far, so good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Want me to come back later with something else for you? I don't know. What is it going to be? <laughs> <laughs> It'll get worse, I'll tell you. <laughs> I don't know. You usually bring something with you that interrupts either our signal or our telephone line. <laughs> yeah. Is anything following you today? Did you look around? I'm pretty sure there is somebody with me today, so yes. A, a good someone or a bad someone? Mm, That's a problem. On, we don't know. Depends on who you are. Okay. And who they're targeting. There's only 20 minutes left in the show. I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> have you found any new ghosts in Charlestown? I have. And I've got uh, right now five places that I'm going to start research on um, this winter. I do all my research in the winter. So there will actually be two new tours um, added to the four types of tours I already do. So, um, yeah. I'm real excited by this time next year I'm going to be working on a new book, you know, from these new places and even elaborating more on the research that I've done on who these people are. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited for the upcoming year. Have there been any uh, awakenings at the railroad crossings recently? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, that's usually the site where people run the most during your tour. It is. It is the place. This is becoming almost every stinking tour this happens happened again saturday night we did the um full moon mm -hmm. ghost tour and it happened again and i i had just told okay the people, what happened again yeah, yeah, yeah. okay all right gotta wait here. Right, right. okay don't mess with pennywise <laughs> uh, <laughs> i certainly don't I'll come up out of the sewer in front of your house <laughs> he's impatient <laughs> um what happens is when we start going down north street because we're going to the intersection of north and mildred as soon as we start getting near the street lights, somebody's right underneath them, those lights will go out. Get to the next one, those lights will go out. Then behind us, as people are clearing the lights, the lights go back on again. And then at one point, all the lights went out in the whole street. So it's happening every single tour now. It's almost, they're either welcoming us or not happy about us being there and putting us in total dark. A lot of electrical stuff, mm -hmm. you know. It's um, And we got a, uh, somebody got a great picture. I often talk about Virginia Cole, who was kept in a, she was 14 when she died, and she died of dis, uh, diphtheria. And she only shows up in pink. And I on that same tour Saturday night, uh, it was actually somebody that I went to junior high school with. She had her grandkids on the tour. Um, she got a picture of a pink mist at Virginia Cole's, you know, starting to come up over my left shoulder and envelop me. So, Do you feel that when it happens? Sometimes, but not always. Um, with her, I usually don't feel it. Somebody else will capture it in their pictures. So, I mean, we even have one picture where you can actually see um, somebody had just said we were arguing uh, I had someone that does holistic healing and stuff, and I had her come along on the tour just for grins and giggles. And thank you for self-editing on that one, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and um, anyway, I uh, uh, now you threw me off. Sorry, <laughs> you're going in the basement next. <laughs> He's oh, going no. first. You're going next. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, someone got a picture. She was saying she does, you know, that her mother was here, and I said, nope, her mother is buried in Harper's Ferry. And somebody got a picture of these pink slender arms. You could count all 10 fingers and they're wrapped around me because I spend so much time over there. I used to go and put on put a blanket down and read to her. Oh, no kidding. So, yeah. So she's appreciative. And of she that. has yeah, she has two baby dolls at her grave right now and assorted other things. We bring her gifts and I saw somebody brought her a little dinosaur the other day and I just Heard some kind of thud. Did you hear that? I yeah. Either Donna fell or something else is going on up here. <laughs> Should I go check on Donna? Should I? You just want to leave, but don't lie. <laughs> if we see something bust through that wall, I'm leaving. I will make footprints over top of both of your backs to get out. <laughs> now, you used to live in a place where you had a very active backyard, but you've moved. Is, is, is it calm move. where you live now? It's fairly quiet over there. Um, I did take um, – it has been an African-American neighborhood – um, for a very, very, very long time. There were famous singers that, that I live over on, and I don't mind saying it, over on South Lawrence Street. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I didn't realize Billie Holiday sang there. Nice. Um, James Brown, uh, Ike and Tina Turner. The heavyweights. Sang over there. They they were self... I went on the African-American tour, and I highly, highly recommend that to anybody that wants to go to Charlestown mm-hmm. and take that tour. I was just... I mean, for hours afterwards, I was just like, wow, wow. Fabulous tour. Um, What's it called? How do you find it? If you go on the city site, they'll usually, if you go on the uh, city of Charlestown, uh, Priscilla Rod did it the day. She's on the city council. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just she and I that day. So we really got to break things down and talk about things. And I was just amazed and proud of the neighborhood that I'm living in. Cool. But you don't, it's not haunted like your old one. I don't know. Because your old one was pretty, your backyard the old, was quite active. My backyard was very active. I actually got three members of the KKK in my backyard at one point. So, Like, like ghost KKK or mm-hmm. real KKK? No, no. Real KKK, I would have gone after them. But, ghost um, KKK, yeah, you can't. Yeah, and I just watched them. I had them on video. And they went from the right side to the left side of my backyard. In full and regalia? Dis- and disappeared through the fence, huh? In full regalia? The yeah, hoods and everything? the little pointy hood, uh, the whole nine yards. So, Are they apparitions or like real human-looking things? They look pretty human, but you could see through them. So um, I've, the, I've got the picture on Facebook. So um, in general, are graveyards or cemeteries, because um, I know there's a difference, are, are, are they basically calm or are they very active in terms of paranormal activity? They're all different, but paranormal activity, I'll tell you the two places you're going to get it more than any other place, hospitals and churches. Okay. Because it goes back to... Energy and when we feel emotions, you know, love, lust, greed, joy. Um, think of a church, all the events that go on in a church. You know, we have funerals, we have weddings, we have baptisms. Um, you know, even praising God in a church, that's emotional. All the key lines of demarcation in your life. Yep. Right? Are all found there, and you find them in hospitals. Mr. Miller. At what point in your life did you become interested in these kinds of things and and then especially to think that at some point you might do ghost tours well i became interested in i saw my first ghost oatlands plantation I, they might have changed it to oatlands estate now but uh it's out on 15 outside of leesburg okay. my uh best friend and i she i used to spend the night out there all the time and we saw our saw our first spirit together in the little tea house out there and um after my grandfather died i saw him um my grandmother was very intuitive she um her sister was dying in the hospital and all of a sudden we were sitting in her formal dining room and she had a corner curio cabinet and all of a sudden all the plates and everything kept shaking and um she just looked up and then she looked at me and she said, Helen's gone. And uh, sure enough, the phone rang and my great aunt had passed away. So I think that I do, I think my grandmother was very intuitive as far as the energy of people that are no longer physically here. You were how old at that time? Let's say grade school. Okay. And then the thing in the Oatlands, I was probably about 13. So when do the ghost tours kind of come in? When when do you start learning history of, of the Charlestown and the things that are going on there? And you just mentioned two new tours coming. Right. So how do you find out about those new events? Is that research that you do? Does someone come to you and say, hey, I'm experiencing this? or All of the above. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I check myself. I, if I'm feeling... Strong energy coming from a building. There's particularly one I'm trying to think of. It. It's behind the bank with a big parking lot in Charlestown, right downtown near city city council. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a building. If you're sitting in the parking lot, it is a brick rectangular building. It does have an add-on to it. I am getting really strong feelings that um, it was probably a boarding house, or uh, but I think there was some kind of. Um, illegal activity going on in it Mm -hmm. because i'm getting like prohibition people drinking um playing cards perhaps 
young lady sauntering around. So this kind of sounds like a psychic describing what they're reading in a room or something to that effect. Are you, are you uh, part that as well? I don't think so. I think we all are. Um, everybody has it. You go into a party. You get invited to a party. You walk in, and you immediately go, Ugh, I think I'm going to go home and turn on a movie and eat some popcorn. I just got to get out of here. And then other times you go in and you feel welcome and warm and the atmosphere is good. Everybody has that ability. We were just taught as children there's no such things as ghosts. Mm -hmm. That's because you had to be able to get to sleep at night when you were three. And if they introduced <laughs> no, ghosts into your room, the you parents went to sleep. wanted to go to sleep. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no <laughs> such thing as ghost kid. Go to sleep. <laughs> exactly. We often walk into a, into a place and you just sort of have a malevolent, nasty feeling. Yes. At least I do, and and and, and it's not pleasant. And, it's and easy yet you to... came back here, John. I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna sage this place a little later. Here, but, um, and it's easy to blame that on the paranormal, but do you think it goes the other way too? Because there are some places you walk in and just feel great serenity, and you're it, it's pleasant. Do we accept that maybe that's paranormal activity? Are there happy ghosts who are welcome? Oh, absolutely! And, and like, come on in, have a seat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, two friends of mine owned a house. Um, it it was the Kennedy House on uh, North Lawrence Street, and neither one of them, I don't think, needed you know could even use the microwave. But you would get the smell of warm baking goods coming love, love out. There, people go, again, emotions. We have a spirit that is in the opera house that she shows up for, not so much for performances, because I had interviewed Ellen Hupke, who was the first person I interviewed about it. And she seems to like the rehearsals, the excitement of the rehearsals. And... Uh, so with her, I think it, there's no description anywhere, anywhere in any files of someone of that age, that description around that period of time, because she wears, I'd say probably 1920s to 1930s garb, and she wears a different dress all the time. She's got a walk-in closet. It's incredibly cool. But um, she is happy. I think she was just a patron of the arts and comes where she was happy. Now, you've had places where you just won't go back in anymore. I remember you telling me one place in particular in a tour that you were doing. There's a few places I won't go. Um, and there's a, we no longer go in the basement of Zion Episcopal. Because? Well, two reasons. One is it, uh, the church insurance, they changed. And so we can't go in there anymore. And to be honest with you, I was so incredibly relieved because it um, – it's a lot of them in there, and there's a, a crone. You remember the old definition of a crone with a beak nose and no teeth? The, the classic and, witch. Yes. The, the cartoon We witch. have gotten her on three different pictures, and, I mean, dating from back to 2014 to just earlier this year. So, um, Does she just pose, or does she? No, she comes in. This is, oh, this is so creepy. The one picture, it was on the same tour, Nobody really knew each other. There weren't, like, any big groups. And there are chairs down there. And um, a young girl was going through her pictures that she had taken. She's sitting in a chair. And one of the pictures that someone sent me, you can see just the face and the beak nose and everything, and the eyes are bulging, coming right at her head. Someone else took a picture. Now, you've got an empty chair. On either side, you have the girl. Then you've got a uh, guy probably my age, both looking through pictures. In between them in that empty chair sits a woman in a full apparition. She's got on a furry black fur hat, black fur collar. The, I mean, you could see the wrinkles. You could see everything, no teeth. And her eyes were bulging out of her head as she stared at that young girl. And then, then... I went back through some pictures or you know after this happened and I was just looking to see if was anything interesting found her in a picture from 2014 So she had appeared before Yeah and I just didn't put it all together So uh, why the why the overwhelmingly creepy feeling about the room though other than her 
unpleasant. I don't know. It's been called a portal to hell. It's been called a lot of things. In the Episcopal Church? In the basement. Okay. The upstairs has a sweet, almost has a scent to it. It's so sweet and peaceful. Um, Someone had a key to the sanctuary on one of my tours, and we all just respectfully sat down, and we got beautiful pastel orbs, and it was just a, I think, one of the most serene feelings I've ever felt. But downstairs, not so much. Is there a, any story of anything horrible that happened down there that you're aware of? There are. Um, some of it is probably not good for morning radio, but there was a, a gentleman that, uh, let's just say he he liked the company of children. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And three children disappeared off a, that had attended a parade in two different hi- years, mm-hmm. in 20 and 21. And um, he had access to every white burial ground in town. I heard that that was done by a clown in the sewer that took the kids away. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, he did dress like a clown. (laughs) So go figure. Just backs up Gil Strap's assertion right now. I rest my case. He was part of a band. um, To be honest, they were. Ku Klux Klaners. Mm-hmm. Um, he was part of a band. Not all of the band could play an instrument. And the band was called the Crazy Cut Curls, KKK. And they would lead the parades in town. Form, they formally came out in 1922, burned a cross in front of the courthouse. Um, but he was a member of that group. Uh, there was a gentleman um, down on uh, North Street down near the Blessing House, he was staying in a boarding house. His name was Lewis Johnson, and he was so excited because he was going home the next day. The, the railroad workers would come, do a shift, do whatever they specialized in, and then go home, and a different group would come in. And this gentleman's name was Lewis Johnson. And when I think of him, I think of the wonderful actor in uh, The Green Mile. That's how I picture him because there are no pictures of him. But he was so excited because he was going home the next day. See his wife and his kids. About and, 10 seconds. Okay. And anyway, they found his head in the front of the uh, property and his body in the back, and band practice had just ended then. And on that note, mm-hmm. we take our final two-minute break here, back with the final minute with Ann Fern.